Hi everyone, it's Megan and I have Allie and Ross here today to answer, are these search results organic? So tell me about yourself, Ross. Hi, I'm Ross. I'm the SEO director at Herdat. Um, I oversee the SEO teams and local search teams. Awesome. And Allie, welcome. Thank you. I'm Allie. I am the director of paid search at Herdat and basically anything you put ad spend behind is what I'm overseeing. Nice, nice. Um, so for a lot of um, searchers, it's pretty fluid. You type in a question and you get a result, but sometimes businesses are paying for them to, their answer, their brand, whatever, to be at the top, paid search, and sometimes, well, I guess SEO is an investment, so they're paying for it as well. Um, but break it down, what's organic and what's paid? How do we know the difference? So traditionally, um, organic links used to be the 10 blue links that you see in the, the search engines. Um, but obviously over time, the, the search engine result pages have um, evolved and there's been numerous features added. So like in the olden days, there used to be ads down the side and then 10 blue links in the middle. And it was very simple. You could see which ones were ads and you could see which ones were organic. Um, but as I, I mentioned, over the time, things have changed drastically. Um, and there's many new features in there like local map packs, um, image carousels, video carousels, um, even down to like people also ask questions and um, FAQs, things like that, that that are really taking up the real estate. So the traditional 10 blue links have been reduced usually now to probably about eight. Um, but with that said, a lot of the, the organic things are now becoming a little bit more prevalent. So the, the, the features that we mentioned, the FAQs that people also ask, are generated from the organic side of things. Yeah, so it sucks if you were 9 or 10. See ya. Yes, yes, you, you're relegated to page 2. Well, it makes sense because Google's making space for you to pay them. So tell me about your, your areas. Yeah, so um, basically the first probably three or four depends on um, how many extensions, whatnot, an advertiser will have, but the first four, three or four um, basically entries are ads. And they're, I mean, denoted by little tiny ad things. You see it, but um, they want to try to hide it as much as they can. <laughs> um, and then they're also at the bottom of the page. They can show up um, in a map pack um, if you're using location extensions. And then Google also has results on like YouTube and then the display network. So kind of everywhere. Oh my God, they're everywhere. They follow me yeah. around. You go to a website and then you're stocked for a good 30 days. Yeah, Google Lovely. will find you. <laughs> well, and that's because you're clicking on an ad first. So mm -hmm. that's how they're dropping that cookie, right? Um, so explain to me, um, like, when, is, when should you put ad spend behind something versus investing in, um, you know, on your site? Do I compete for those blue links? Do I, like, get that click through an ad? It's more of a symbiotic relationship. Um, obviously, um, paying for things is expensive, um, and you can't sustain that over a, a long period of time usually because the, some of the keywords that you're, you're um, paying for are, are extremely expensive. So the way that we should approach it is um, SEO is the long play, and um, paid pay-per-click is kind of the shorter game. Obviously, a SEO takes time. It can take several months for the SEO to actually work its way through the system and to Google to um, evaluate pages and then rank them um, where you'd want them to be ranked. So whilst you're waiting for that to happen, that's when you can really utilize the, the paid aspect and, and get your brand and your, your links in front of people whilst you're waiting for that, that organic to work. Yeah, and f for you, Ali, like how do you decide where to place those ads? So it is the right time to um, run a paid ads campaign, where do you start? Is it search? Is it display? Like, Yeah, it really depends on the advertiser's goals, um, where you think their audience will be. Um, and really, honestly, too, a lot of CPCs, um, you only pay for when someone clicks on your ad, but sometimes, a lot of times, like in a service industry, um, those are really expensive clicks. So um, you just want to be really, really smart about how you're investing in that. Like Ross said, it plays into your SEO. It can be a supplement um, to your SEO as well. So it really depends on your goals, um, your budget, of course. Uh, display is usually cheaper. So that's something to keep in mind too. Um, but of course, you can't ever take away that um, the benefit you get from reaching someone that is actively searching for 
what you have to offer. So yeah, right now, like I need this. I mean, I got shut out of my garage, like a spring or something broke. And I was like, can I get in? Like who's first? Who's first? Got to, got to call right now. So, I mean, that makes sense being there in the moment, which would take a lifetime with of SEO. Exactly. And as I said, now with the different features on the page, it's very difficult for those organic links to be seen um, in a quick moment like that. So if somebody's doing playing the long game and really doing researching things, that's the perfect moment for, for organic search. But if somebody needs something instantly, that's when pay-per-click can really be an advantageous for the advertiser because somebody needs something really quickly, they're going to click at the first thing that they see. And nine times out of ten, the first thing they see is going to be an ad. Yeah. Well, I mean, and the algorithms are super different. So explain to me how that works for both of you because uh, you have less controls, right? Yes. Yep. So, so we are really at the mercy of the algorithms and what Google thinks and how Google assesses the pages. Um, yes. Over time, we've we've picked up little hints and, and tricks and, and experiences, and we know what what works, what ranks, and how to get pages ranked better. But then, at the end of the day, um, Google changes that algorithm kind of six hundred times a year, if not more. So we're always playing catch up when it comes to the algorithms. Um, but with that said, we're, we're part of a big wide community that is constantly com communicating with each other. So we can see as soon as an algorithm um, update has happened, we're on top of it. We are working together with the with um, other SEOs um, to figure out what the change was and how we can then um, optimize for that. Um, so it, it's, it's definitely something that's... Um, more difficult when it comes to organic because there are, there are so many different factors that are involved. And I think that's why um, it costs so much for the advertisers is because you're kind of getting that shortcut. You get in that, you pay more money, you're going to be seen higher. Mm -hmm. Whereas organic is very much the, the kind of the long play game. It takes time and effort and resources to, to get those um, web pages ranked on, on the, in the traffic position. So. Sure, sure. But you can have bottomless pockets and still not get to the top. So what's yeah. uh, your algorithm looking at? Basically, with Google Ads, it all comes down to your quality score. And Google assigns that based on um, three factors. So it is your expected click-through rate, click -through rate um, your ad relevancy, and then your landing page experience. So well, what do those mean? You really need to know. <laughs> I'm just going to grill you. Yeah. Break it down. Because, um, I mean, those things are super broad. Like, that makes sense on paper. Um, cool. I need to have a lot of money. I need to be, like, advertising for people that are looking for my stuff. And let's drive them to the right place. But, obviously, like, as we know with SEO, there's a ton of little factors that, that both algorithms are looking at. And kind of how do they play together? specifically like maybe the landing page a lot of times landing pages can be on your site or they could be specific landing page designed for um, your campaign but um, yeah what what needs to be on there how do you get a good quality score um, so for your landing page specifically um, it's usually first of all best practice is to not have it um, link back to your website and the reason being is you want to capture the conversion at that time. Like you don't want them to abandon it. So um, you have the user, you have them on your site. You, you just pay them for them. Convert. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, you don't want any pop-ups. You want the landing page to be relevant to whatever query is that the searcher searched in the first place. Um, those are just a couple of things. Um, I mean, there's a lot of like, you know, no like no this like flashing motion or what I mean Google has all these different they got a thick rule book right they do <laughs> um but really I would say the top things are just relevant to the searcher um no pop-ups and like I said you just best practice don't want to link back to your site because once you have them you want to you want to lock them in yeah well I mean don't let them go down the rabbit hole of your site that makes sense right. I mean we just talked a couple of weeks ago about user experience and how to design when they get to your site so I mean, if all things are working together, maybe they're not lost for forever, but that makes sense. Like, you just paid maybe a lot for that click. So. Right. It's just harder to track them than that way. So, Yeah, definitely. Well, that gives me – that's, like, another whole point that um, there's a lot of controls that you have right over your campaigns and a lot of um, analytics that you get back. So what do you do with all that? Yeah, uh, that's such a broad question. <laughs> um, what, like, in terms of when I'm looking at an account and how I'm looking at optimizing, again, it kind of depends on their goal. Um, 
But some levers that I'm usually pulling are like ad copy tests, um, different optimizing bids, um, maybe optimizing your landing page. Maybe you're finding that it's not converting, like you're getting a lot of clicks, people are getting through, but um, no one's converting on your actual site. Um, That's another big one. Gosh, um, one thing I feel like where a lot of advertisers fall short is they're not using all of the available advert- like um, ad extensions. So you want to take up as much real estate as you can if you are going to pay for that click. So, um, for example, like site link extensions, which link back to like a different place on your site, um, which I know kind of goes against what <laughs> I just said, but um, they're not clicking on your ad. They're clicking on basically in a like a just a different link from your site um well it makes sense if it's super relevant if they're like hey i typed in running shoes but i'm actually looking for women's trail running shoes or something it's like okay cool then i know where i'm going when i click the site link exactly um location extensions um call extensions just any extension you can use um i really encourage advertisers to do because again that knocks your competition out of that like first three pack um, well, even like visually, it means that they have to scroll right. down further. They like have to like get past the and real estate that you take better. up. It looks better. It looks better. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Um, what about display network? What about YouTube? Um, how do those work? What do you? What are best practices for those? Um, I mean, it really. So, if you are, if you're like, if we're talking like in just a Google search campaign, if you're opting into the display network. Basically, you like your ads can still show across those different um, websites. So, on like a YouTube or anywhere on Google's display network, which they don't disclose to you exactly what sites are on their display network. Um, but it makes up about 70% of all websites on the internet. So, like, that's a pretty big chunk of Everywhere. websites. Google's following you. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, so I would say for sure opt into those. You may find that it brings down your click-through rate, so it means something to watch, but um, it's free exposure, essentially, or cheaper exposure. It's like uh, a little billboard right. on anyone, someone else's site. So you can pick kind of relevancy, right? If I recall, mm-hmm. like you can say, like, oh, I think my ad's relevant to people that are looking at sports-related websites, mm-hmm. and then your ad can show in their display network right. where... And you can have a search ad, you can have an image ad, yep. um, of course, in YouTube if you want a video ad. So it really, like, again, I know I just keep saying this, but it depends on their goals um, and, yeah, what they're looking to do. Awesome. That makes a lot of sense, Allie. So you've invested in your site, and how does that kind of work together with this, um, like, with your paid search campaign once your SEO starts to kick in? Yeah, so, so the way that we, we can work together with PPC and SEO is – Obviously, not every area of your website is going to be working at once. If it is, then great. That's a wonderful place to be, and I wish you the best of luck. But (laughs) that doesn't happen very often. So there's oftentimes different parts of the website that don't work organically, and that's when you can then look at the data and then use pay-per-click campaigns to supplement those areas whilst you go ahead and optimize those areas that are not working. So it's a constant um, kind of symbiotic relationship that we have with PPC and SEO. It's always looking at the numbers, always looking at the data to see what's performing, what's not, and how we can then supplement the areas of SEO that are not working, and how we can reduce costs by turning off some of the ads for the the areas of of SEO that is working, so that we're trying to just keep that wheel moving and not spending too many dollars on things that are already working organically, and we're not spending enough on those areas where organic isn't quite hitting the mark just yet. Yeah, optimizing your budget, of course, giving our clients the biggest bang for their their budget. That makes sense. Yeah, like Ross said, I think as long as like you're in communication, like, hey, we're not ranking for these keywords. Is there some kind of paid campaign we can put behind it? Like in the meantime, while we work, like while we're working on our exactly. SEO. Yep. Can you? Do you guys have any examples of things where this has like really worked well? Like, are there industries that we think like, you know, lean very heavy on cert on paid for a bit until search kicks in, or vice versa? Like I, I think for, for most industries, most websites, especially if it's a brand new one, it's going to take kind of three to six months before you really see performance in an SEO in, in an organic sense. Um, so most websites would benefit from some kind of paid campaign at the beginning. And then, as, as I said, once once the SEO starts to kick in and, and you're getting those organic results, that's when you can really take a, a step back and look at the big picture and then try and fill in some of those gaps where organic might not be working as well as it could be uh, and then 
target those paid campaigns for those areas while you go back and then optimize those areas to, to actually start performing. And it's it's never ever continual cycle. Yeah, it's never done. It's never done. <laughs> yeah, Google Google always wants your dollar. So I think that's like what we've seen the major shift towards too, as they start taking away organic placements, as they start taking away um, pl- placement in Google Maps for the GMB listing. That it's because they're selling it. They're like, oh, we like this real estate. Yep. This is our prime real estate, and we're going to sell it. So, I mean, I guess that's where we've seen the shift and why investing in SEO is so important still even because you're competing for less spots now um, or you're going to pay. And that, right. that makes it even more important to really focus and, and look at what's happening because you could end up competing against yourself. And that's that's not something you want to do. You don't want to be paying for a click when you can clearly see that your organic link is there working. So right. you always have to be monitoring and being observant of how – your website is performing and how the pay-per-click side of things is, is, is performing because very easily, because there are so many different facets now to the paid side of things that are not necessarily that visible. Mm. You don't know that that's an ad. Like I say, that in the local pack, you can have an ad and then you want your two organic listings next to it. And then that that's not good because usually the ad's going to be the top one. So that's the one that's going to get clicked. Great, you get in the traffic, but you're paying for that traffic when the next two links are yours as well. Mm-hmm. I've seen that before. I'm like, wait, are there two listings? Mm-hmm. And it's like for the same business, but yep. no, one's the ad, one's right. the or like organic yep. GMB listing. And, and we all know we've all done searches and we don't look for that ad button. We're not, not oh, that's an ad, so I'm not going to click on it. Yeah. You just look for the first one in the list that matches what you're looking for and you hit that link. So I mean, even if you did know it was an ad, it's not like you care. It's yeah, the, we, not, we, you, not, but not your money. <laughs> yeah, we as consumers are not paying right. for that ad. So it's definitely important to be vigilant about how your, your website is performing in, in the SERPs because you can end up really like paying for a link that you could have gotten organically. If you have a large enough budget, talk about some of our enterprise clients. Does it make sense to bid on your own name so you're taking up as much real estate and kind of like, so that's best practice usually, I would say, for someone who has a limit, not a limited budget, but not an endless budget. It's just um, some utilizing the budget you have. But um, enterprise clients kind of explain how we how we approach that. In terms of bidding for basically your branded terms, um, if you are a a pretty big company, I would say you don't need to do that. Um, It's just you're wasting your money. That's like one of those situations where you do kind of cringe when you see like a paid ad and then like their organic listing right underneath and you're like, oh. Ooh, I think I've just seen it as a tactic maybe to, to like that. block out competitors. And They're like, hey, you're not going to take the usually, top spot. Right. And usually you only have to do that for a week, two weeks, a month. Um, and then you drive your competitor's CPCs up so high that they're like, forget it, it's not worth <laughs> it. Um, so yeah, and, and that's a competitive tactic too that um, sometimes we do for some of our smaller um, businesses just, you know, hey, like, hey, get off my brand name. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we do opposite. We're like, oh. bid on, bid on your competitors, um, get yourself kind of out there. Um, cause a lot, like a lot of times for the bigger companies, um, they aren't, like I said, they aren't bidding on their brand terms. And so you can kind of buy yourself some extra clicks that way. Yeah. That's a super opportunity. Steal some of that market share. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you're looking for my friend. Here I am. Right. Nice. Um, Cool, guys. Well, anything else you want to add? I can think of. So, Ali, w- when I'm, I've looked at a, a pair of sneakers that I'm interested in, <laughs> why do I see that ad every single time I go back to the web? Because I said Google will find you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, those are remarketing ads. I think we have all been haunted by those. It's funny. I feel like when I'm explaining my job, that's like everybody's first question. Like, oh, you're not responsible for those <laughs> ads that follow now me everywhere. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically, it's just a tag that you put on your site. Um, so when somebody visits, you essentially get to collect that information. And then you follow people around <laughs> with uh, retargeting, remarketing ads. And they go away, right? Like after, after certain- yeah, you set it for a certain amount of time. Usually it's 30 days. Until they come back to your site, right. and you get it again. Yep. But, That's hey, why they're following you. Yeah, it me so Just many buy times. the sneakers already, Ross. <laughs> I already have a problem with sneakers. Don't make me encourage you to make me any more. <laughs> uh, what about YouTube? So tell me a little bit more about how and when it makes sense to advertise on YouTube. What yeah. do I need to? Like, I mean, I think first you really like you need an engaging video asset. Um, so that's like first and foremost. 
uh, probably want to keep it about 15 seconds. Um, yeah, I know when I'm on YouTube, um, well, because I'm trying to get something done, usually I'm like, right. how do I fix this? Um, I'm not watching that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, count down, three, two, skip. So right. 15 seconds is a long haul, right, for if you're watching the full ad. Mm-hmm. But... Well, I guess, I mean, so if, if you're targeting on YouTube, um, it's similar to like how you would target on Google's display network. So it can be topic. Um, if you've expressed interest in something, if you're actively searching for like a specific product or service, um, it can be demographic. Um, I, don't know, I mean, all kinds of different levels. Yeah, lots you of can controls. Pull there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you could do a remarketing campaign on um, YouTube as well. So Kind of the same levers you can pull on Google Search and Google Display are uh, the same targeting options you have on YouTube. Awesome. Awesome. Is it more expensive? Like, how does it compare to some of the, like, budget requirements for Search or Display? Um, I mean, YouTube is pretty cheap, but um, people don't typically, I mean, your conversion rate is much lower. So... Because they're there to watch the video, not right. to, like, click on your... I mean, typically, maybe you bunny trail down that right. ad, but, like... <laughs> <laughs> typically, um, you're you're paying more for, like, a cost for review, so it's it's pretty cheap. But, yeah, people aren't... Don't usually take action. Um, but you can, like, collect their information if they viewed your ad and then follow them around that way. <laughs> <laughs> Just stalk them some more. Right. I like it. Awesome, guys. Well, it's been awesome to talk with you both. Um, I think it makes a lot more sense about where these two um, like pieces fit in. Um, but instead of thinking of them separately, they definitely do work together. And I think that's yep, a great point definitely. that they, they can supplement each other until the SEO kicks in or they can be used to dr- like and achieve a specific goal because of the controls that we have over a paid campaign. So, awesome. Thank you for joining me today. Appreciate it. Very welcome. Thank you. Yeah. I've Heard That is a part of the Heard At Media Network. For more information, follow Heard At on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or Instagram, or visit HeardAtMarketing.com. A Heard At Media Production.